Welcome back to Texas Yacht. I'm here at one of our fields, BF uh, Access 2. It's a, uh, this year or this, this season, it's going to be a Milo field. Uh, last time this was corn. This area has, hasn't been too bad with hogs. We haven't seen really that many um, over the last uh, 12 months, I would say. The farmer told me that they're seeing more hogs again now along this stretch. So we'll just give it a, give it a try tonight. I'm still waiting uh, for Micah. Micah is helping somebody move right now, so he's going to be running a little late tonight. Um, but uh, probably get started here. Uh, Chris is with me, so we'll, we'll start at this field and um, see what's coming in. I don't have a camera out here right now. Um, they just had a new one come out, this Bipod uh, Link Micro, which is um, pretty inexpensive and uh, comes with most of those features. Um, so I'll probably have that coming pretty soon and then uh, give that a shot. But um, yeah, having a camera out here will be nice because then we don't have to do this guesswork right now um, uh, about, you know, is something coming out here or not? Does it, is it worth our, our time basically to even sit here and, and wait for something to show up? But uh, since we're still waiting on Micah, I think let's just give it a shot. Plan for the night, um, start here, use that ACR again. Um, 6.8 SPC uh, it's been working out pretty good. I liked the last, last hunt. Um, there was one big boar in there and I, I was able to shoot him like three or four times and that was that was pretty fun. It was good to you know know that the 6.8 is going where I wanted to go. So that definitely bumped up my confidence level uh, for that round. Um, so let's start here. Um, give it a you know give it an hour or two maybe. Uh, if nothing shows up here, then we'll just head over to the wheat field. Um, I can almost promise you guys that the wheat field will have uh, customers uh, for us. And then um, we have another wheat field. Um, or a big trusty wheat field and it's usually um, you know just crawling with hogs so that's what we're focusing on right now because the wheat is getting tall the farmers want us to come out and uh, you know take care of those hogs so right now it's really that season to to go in this in these wheat fields um, then they will be quickly followed by the milo field here getting taller and then also the corn fields um, so that's that's kind of like our focus for this time of the year. Um, we do have some other properties, and I know that there's some other owners out there um, who want us to come out. But it's right now um, just critical to to go after these farm fields. Um, that's where they where, where they concentrated. So that's you know uh, the best place to hit them right now. All right. So enough of the talk. I know I get quite a few comments in the videos like you talk too much. Okay, let's stop talking. Uh, grab the guns and see if we can get some hawks in front of the rifle. Later, dudes. So we were just about to um, head out here, but really the wind is not in our favor tonight. So uh, the feeder is just down here. So we were setting up, what, like 120, 150 yards. It should be usually fine, but the wind is literally just blowing right this way. And uh, down there is a little creek. That's where they usually come up. So there's not a good spot with the wind right now. And uh, the wheat field is pretty close to you, so I'm thinking with the wind being like this tonight, and I checked on the on the app, it doesn't doesn't really change much tonight. Uh, we'll just come back here some other time. I checked on the feeder, feeder is running, uh, corn is on the ground, and something's definitely going after it. So um, I think the wheat field is all better bet right now, so we're just going to pack up, head over there, and it's 
Right now it's about 8 o'clock, so Mike should be here any minute anyways. So we'll just do a beach field game plan and uh, kill some hawks tonight. Let's go. So we're in that wheat field right now. We just drove over it really, it's pretty close, but um, Micah is not here yet. So I'm not sure if he's done with uh, that move or not, or I texted him and let him know where we are. So he might show up, we don't know. But you guys can see the, the wheat is already pretty tall. And I just looked um, through the thermal back there. It's, I don't know, about 700 yards or something. I see two spots can't tell right now if it's deer or not. Um, I haven't zoomed in much. Um, they're all the way at the edge of the field. The thing is, it's, it's too prone, right? One, it's difficult for us to see them because they, they hide so quick in that field and they just disappear. But on the other side, we could be down there right now and their visibility is, is limited too, right? So they would have to lift up the head and, uh, and look over the weed. Uh, that and then second point also is once they're in the weed, it's pretty noisy for them too. So it goes both ways. If we move in the weed, it's noisy, but they move in the weed, it's noisy for them too. So it's a give and take. Um, I think the hardest part about the weed field is really that once you shoot them, they lay flat. And unless you cannot remember where you shot them, it's, it's really difficult to find them. And good luck remembering that when you shoot at like 20, 20 hawks or something and you hit two or three, uh, good luck trying to figure out where they dropped. So let's just uh, move down there now and um, see what we can find down there. Let's go.
this is the uh, second wheat field. The first one, we had well, one, one boar come in. Um, there might have been some Mohawks all the way in the corner, but they were just too far away. Uh, I tried to go after that boar because he was, he was closing in pretty quick. And I thought I would have been on him, took a shot, and he started running. It didn't, it didn't look like he was hit. So we called it a night over there. Um, it was just too slow and it was already nine o'clock or something. Micah ended up not showing up. He, uh, I guess, was too beat uh, from, from moving. So old bones, I guess, hurt. Um, I know how that goes. Uh, Chris and I packed up, uh, moved over to, to this wheat field, um, the one with the you know, big saunders and everything. And uh, sure enough, we had uh, a group of hawks, maybe uh, 10, 15, um, I didn't really count, but uh, was in that neighborhood. Um, we had them pretty close to us, which was nice, so we didn't have to move all the way down in the field, um, which made that approach uh, pretty easy. Uh, we had some noise cover, a train came through, which, which helped quite a bit, uh, and then the wind wasn't too bad either, so we were able to get maybe, I don't know, between 15, 80 yards probably of them. Uh, one of them actually, and it was the one on Chris's side, so he got lucky. Uh, he shot one maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 yards. I mean, it was, it was really close. Um, I was even concerned that that hawk would just, you know, uh, either wind us or see us um, and then uh, cause, cause that whole sounder to, to run off. But uh, we were lucky. Um, also with the backdrop, I think it was good over there. There was no cows behind, behind Chris's target. So um, I had a good shot at one, uh, pretty nice um, clean line of sight. So we did a countdown uh, and took the shot. Uh, from what I can tell from Chris, he hit his. So this one went down pretty quick. Uh, mine went down, uh, was squealing quite a bit, but he went, uh, she or he went down. I'm uh, really not sure which one that was. And then was three more and I took a few more shots and um, I took a total of three. Uh, Chris had this one here, the uh, half orange one really. Um, so we have a total of four, which is nice. Uh, also happy with the 6.8 in this, uh, this, this go around. Um, I had to put a few more uh, holes in one of them. It was squealing quite a bit. So I took my, um, my pistol, it's a 40 uh, Heckler and Koch um, and dispatched that, that one hawk. But the other two went down and uh, I didn't see them move anymore. Uh, one of them was a pretty good a headshot and the other one I uh, actually haven't checked, but um, uh, yeah, size-wise those are pretty decent. Um, this must have been a decent group. Uh, Mike and I have been seeing basically the same group over and over again. We, we basically watched um, those piglets grow from this size to, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. I don't know if those are from, from that same group. Those look bigger, but maybe I'm also bad at judging how fast uh, those hawks really grow. Um, knowing that um, a friend of mine took the little piglet I once, once uh, caught uh, and just watching him, you know, they, they took that piglet in uh, almost as a, as a house uh, dog um, and, you know, fed it and everything and just seeing how fast that thing grew over the stretch of four months is mind-blowing. Uh, they grow extremely fast, so it's very possible that those are the little piglets we've seen, um, you know, just uh, under a year ago. Anyways, uh, good night. Um, the Bushmaster ACR performed nicely. The 6.8 SPC performed nicely. Um, we're shooting uh, Barnes uh, uh, bullets and they, they loaded by double tap ammunition. Um, so they performed nice. Uh, Thor 4 did a good job. Um, so all in all, I think a successful night. Uh, took some more hawks out of this field. Uh, and we probably just pack up here and, and do some more scanning. There's a good chance the size of this field that there's just a few more hawks, you know, uh, 200 yards from us. Um, so maybe we'll get lucky and we get some more hawks, but uh, if not, uh, it's a good enough night and uh, we'll just pack up and head home. So thank you guys for watching again. And uh, if you guys like those videos, make sure you get a, give a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, check out our other videos. We have uh, videos with um, 300 Blackout. That's what, what I've shot. Um, quite a bit in the beginning. Then we have some 6.5 Grendel videos. Um, um, the 6.5 Grendel is an amazing round. Uh, I'm, I'm blown away by it. So definitely a go-to 
uh, caliber for me. Very soon, those Bushmaster ACRs we have and 68 SPC, those will be converted to 450 Bushmaster. I already have 450 Bushmaster rounds at home, and uh, I'm I'm more than excited to shoot those. Uh, I, I'm really interested to see how they do on hogs, what kind of damage they can do. Um, I think those are 250 grain, so it's an it's a very heavy bullet. Um, the conversion kit for the Bushmaster ACR, I haven't seen it yet but it's very easy to take this barrel out. There's a little lever in the bottom, you just turn over and all of a sudden you have this barrel out. I would assume that there's the new uh, bolt carrier group and then you have new magazines and then uh, you have a 450 Bushmaster ACR. So pretty excited uh, to work with Remington here to, um, to test these rifles and uh, put them on the small hawks. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you guys subscribe um, and uh, watch out for the next few, few videos.